In this tutorial, we will create a portrait infographic by tracing over various photos in Procreate, taking inspiration from the design work of Australian illustrator James Gulliver Hancock. This video is a simple introduction to line drawing. This project took me about 45 minutes to complete, but could take you longer if you wish to add additional images to your own work. This is just an introduction and will require you to further view examples of inspiration and apply design elements to your own work. You can also use the chapter markers in the video to assist your viewing if needed. Let's get started. How to create a portrait infographic in Procreate. In his book, Artists, Writers, Thinkers, Dreamers, Hancock creates portraits of famous people with informative graphics and text filling the frame. He also has a simple color palette of about three colors. For our project, take a photo of yourself. Think of at least three things that you could visually communicate on who you are. Once decided, find some visuals from online. To save a photo, simply tap and hold and then select Add to Photos. You will see all my photos here in my Photos app. Now that I have some images saved, let's open up Procreate. The first thing we want to do is create a new file or document. We do this by clicking the plus sign here in the top right corner. I'm going to select square since this is just a trial, but you are welcome to use A4 if you wish. Our document opens and you can rotate or decrease or increase the canvas by pinching your two fingers in or out as well as rotating it. For this project we will be using a lot of layers. Your layers panel is here in the top right corner. First we will place all the photos we saved from before into our file to trace over. Go to the Actions tab, or the wrench icon, here in the left hand corner. Select Add, Insert a Photo. Tap which photo you will use. All the photos will appear centered on the canvas. Repeat this step for all the photos. Have a look in the Layers panel. Every photo imported will automatically show up on a different layer. To make all these photos easier to navigate, let's turn them off by deselecting this box. I'll leave the portrait one remaining. At this stage we should start to consider the placement of the various photos. I'm going to make my portrait larger than the others. To move it, simply click the transformation tool or this blue arrow at the top. Since the photo is the only thing on this layer, a boundary box will automatically appear. You can now drag it into your desired position. You can also drag the corner anchor points to further enlarge your photo if you need to. The green dot at the top of the boundary box is there if you wish to rotate the photo. Once satisfied with the placement, deselect the blue arrow at the top to set the image and exit. Go into your layers panel and turn on the next layer by clicking that layers box. Repeat the steps as previous to move and or resize each image. You will notice as you begin to move things around, Images or corners may overlap each other, etc. Don't worry too much about this at this stage. Repeat these steps for all your remaining photos. Once all the images are in place, let's start drawing. Turn off all the layers, except for the main portrait layer. For each of our images, we are going to draw them on a new layer. So I have my photo layer selected, and then I just select the plus sign on the top right. This is handy as it also helps you remember which layer is what once you start creating several. You can leave it like that if you wish or you can tap, hold and drag this layer to the top as I will. The main tool we are going to use are the brushes. Once you open the library you will see there are several options to choose from. Feel free to experiment and select one to your liking. I'm going to go into inking and select syrup. I'm going to scribble on the canvas here to see how it looks. If you tap on your brush style, a window will open where you can adjust the line properties. If you have shaky hands, you may want to stabilize it, adjust the pressure, etc. You can test this out on the drawing pad area here on the right. Feel free to explore this if you're having difficulties. Click done to exit. On the left here is a slider that changes the size of our brush as well as the eraser. Your pencil is also pressure sensitive too. We have another slider underneath that is for opacity. We also have the back arrow or undo button here to erase the last mark or marks we made. The forward arrow underneath returns the marks erased. We can also select a pencil or brush color by going into the color picker here on the top right. 
you see once I select a color in the sphere, the icon changes to that selected color. I'm just going to go ahead and select the color black. So I'm going to double check that I'm on the correct layer, check if I'm using the correct brush, and check on its brush size. If we draw over this photo, it may be hard to see or trace. To make this easier, we're going to go into the photo layer and press this N. Use the slider here to lower the opacity so it's easier to see your drawn line work. Go back and then make sure you have selected your correct drawing layer. Before we move on, Procreate has some neat drawing assists we can use. For example, let's say I need a curved line for an object or for an eyelid. If I draw this curve and then hold my pencil in the position at the end, Procreate will smoothen this for me. The same applies if I wish to draw a straight line. Hold it in position at the end and it will straighten automatically. You can also move the pencil if you wish to change the angle. If you need a circle, hold it again and it will smoothen out. While it's holding, you can also increase or decrease the size by dragging it in or out. Let's finally get started drawing. Zoom in by pinching and even rotate the image while it's tracing over it. Do what is comfortable for you. Use the undo or back arrow if things need repair. I'll speed up this video section. The flashes you see and the zooms are me rotating, undoing, and redoing. One tool I have not mentioned is the eraser tool at the top. It doesn't really need an introduction, but it also has the same variety of erasers that match the brushes, meaning some erasers can have textures. For my drawing, I am simply going over the lines that I see. Feel free to add illustrative techniques or drawing styles that you prefer. The hair will probably be the most difficult part if yours is long, but it is an illustration. You can stylize it or simplify it if you wish. If you want realism or detail, focus on capturing the dark tones within the hair itself. Me, I don't really have that problem with my fancy hairstyle. For my beard, I'll just apply some stipple marks or dots to show the stubble. You can always go back into the layers panel and turn off the photo by unticking the box to see how your drawing is progressing. So my portrait is done. Let's go into the layers panel and move on to the next image. I'll turn on this map of Canada and do that next. Every time I draw something new, I am going to create a new layer to draw it on. This is very important because it will allow you more creative freedom for scaling and overlapping later on. I will repeat these steps for all my other photos. To save your time, I'll skip over that and jump to the finished tracings. So I have all my drawings done, but I need to adjust the layout. Fortunately, each drawing is on a different layer. I'm going to first select the portrait drawing layer. Since it's the only thing on this layer, we can click the transform tool button or this arrow tool again in a boundary box as before will appear around the drawing. We can increase the size using the corner nodes and slide it into a position. Once satisfied, click the transform button again to set and exit. I'll repeat these steps for each individual drawing. Remember to select the layer and then press the transform tool. Don't worry at this stage if some drawings overlap. We are safe since everything is on a different layer. As I reposition items, I also need to keep in mind to leave space for text. We are trying to position everything so the work appears balanced. Let's now give this a go and apply some color. I'm going to create a new layer for the background color and drag it to the bottom as I want it behind the drawing. I'm going to select a big brush for this. I'll go into inking, syrup, and color the entire layer. Now we need a complementing color to add some contrast and harmony. Let's create another layer just in case. I think I will choose some type of blue from the color picker and just test it out with a scribble to see if it needs adjusting. On that new layer created, I'm going to start coloring in. If you focused on drawing via the outlines, make sure you make it a closed shape, meaning no gaps or spaces are between your lines. You can then just drag the color into the shape and it will fill. If you have a gap, the color will spill into the whole canvas area. 
So I have everything colored, but I feel it needs a little bit more. I'm going to choose another color. I'll make another layer and select another color and apply it to the different elements in the drawing. So now I'm thinking the drawing needs further rearrangement. You will see when I move the map of Canada that only the line drawing layer will move. I'll also need to go into the color layer, choose the selection tool to draw around it, and move that as well. Let me jump now to my new arrangement after moving some things around. Our last step will be to add some text. The text could provide some interesting facts or help explain the individual drawings. I'm going to write my name fairly large at the top so it shows some hierarchy. I'll also draw in a drop shadow and some light blue lines in the center. I'll go ahead and do the other areas in black. To add a bit more color, I'm going to create yet another layer to put some color behind the black text. As I see, this is what James Gulliver Hancock also does. Lastly, I think I'll also make the drop shadow on my name a little bit thicker. To save our drawing, go to Actions and select Share and JPEG. It will then prepare for export. Then click Save Image and it will be saved in your Photos app. So we've done ours rather quickly to trial this technique. To take it further, we could add additional drawn elements and really fill the frame as James Gulliver Hancock has done. We could also consider playing with the drawing style, meaning not focus as much on realism, but rather add an illustrative drawing style or approach. I like the limited use of color and feel this makes it more interesting to look at and helps unify it. I would probably also refine my use of text and reconsider my handwriting style or typeface used. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found it helpful and gained some insights. Feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, or leave a comment or suggestion below. Good luck with yours. This has been a Video Production. <laughs>